Hello and welcome back to another Hoops analysis video. Let's just jump right into it and talk about the game. So here we go, we start in the center kickoff. A slug, yeah, we do a little air roll. We're not doing the um, technique I was talking about in the last video, where we intentionally try to lose the kickoff towards our teammate, but it still works out pretty well. That play right there is really good. See how I forced that 50 with him? Instead of trying to go for a play. Very good strategy to use. It doesn't require really high level mechanics, but it's very effective. See, watch, I'm gonna do it here again. Force him to come in for the challenge. It's not the greatest. It does force him to go for the ball, waste boost. And our teammate ends up being able to do something there. Here we go again. Except this time we do a touch and a flick, which ends up catching him off guard. It's really important. The first two plays, I took it really slow, forced a 50, or forced a challenge. And then the third one, I decided to take a touch and flick it immediately. And I think that's something really cool that you can start trying and see how it works. It's just, you're sort of like conditioning your opponents to think you're gonna slow play it. And then you can catch them off guard with the quick little flick after you touch it. Go. We just try and get a shot on net. We end up double committing there. It's hard to say whose fault that was. I couldn't see my teammate. And, you know, I decided to go for it. Maybe I cut him off, but it's all good. We didn't get scored on. All right. So try and take it up the wall here. That's a bad. Yeah, don't hit that. We didn't have a good angle there. So it was a good call not to go for that. Okay, we're getting bumped. Nice little camera check. Let's see what our teammate's doing. He gets bumped, so move in here. That was a really that happened really quickly there, but let's um let's rewind. I think this was something cool we can talk about. So we see our teammate get bumped, and he's out of the play for at least a few seconds. We have Divine over here, and Probably the other opponent coming in pretty soon. Yep, there he is. And so what's our boost total at here? Our boost total, we're at 14, so we're pretty low. So it would be pretty dangerous to just smack this ball into the wall and it would probably end up being a pass to them. So the right play, I think I did pretty well here. We act like we're gonna hit it, take it slow. Dude, right there, we tried to get a 50 with him if he did touch it and then we, Keep the ball close here. Just keep it close. We don't have a lot of boost. There's no need to hit the ball away. So our teammate is still recovering over here and getting ready to uh, defend any shots on the net. So here we just keep it going. Keep it close. Get a 50 and they end up double committing on a 50 or on a challenge here. So this is a really big opportunity or it should be for myself or my teammate, um, you know, to or, uh, capitalize on this mistake and capitalize on, I would say good decisions that we made here in this really quick play. So let's get back into it. And it does end up being an, an opportunity. We can't do much with it. And I end up jumping when he was taking the ball over me. So that was my mistake there. I should have just rotated back. I saw the shot coming in. We're just going for a pretty standard kickoff. Just kind of going center on the ball, trying to get a good hitbox. That was just a really good read, I think. You could see that he was trying to clear it across the other side of the net. And we just block that and ended up, end up you know, dunking it sort of into the net. That was a little aggressive there. Let's rewind that. Here, when I move in for a fake challenge, if they end up hitting this over me, it's pretty dangerous. I definitely overextended a little bit. Could have done better. That's a pretty good touch there to keep the ball away from the opponents. Give it straight to my teammate. Ends up giving us a shot on net. Shoot the ball around him. 
and we see our teammate recovering here again really important a lot of people don't think about this when they're playing hoops or rocket league in general i'd say like look at my look at my teammate here he got bumped he's going in reverse up the backboard and a lot of people here would just be tunnel visioning on the ball right now and be like ball 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 ball, ball. gotta attack uh but not even paying attention to what their teammates doing are they recovering uh poorly are they recovering pretty well and you gotta try and time your challenge with your teammates recovery so look at this i'm thinking about going in and i'm like nah he's about to flick teammates not behind me think about going up the wall and my teammate it wasn't the best for from me but it wasn't exactly bad because i could have gotten a better hit straight ahead towards the net and i can the only reason i go for this is because I see my teammate is basically like half field coming in, just about half court. And so it's a lot safer to go for it in that position rather than when he's in our uh, opponent's net. So that's pretty good. I end up saving my teammate's shot. Love to see that. We're just making an aerial challenge. Nothing special. Wasn't the greatest. And, uh,. Yeah, our teammate ends up getting scored on. Probably could have been a better challenge from me. Don't I don't like that either. Could have waited and gotten a better challenge, I think. But that was a good demo there. And a good demo dodge to follow it up. Demos are, I think, even more... Um, effective in hoops than in soccer just because the field is so small and the uh, the respawn time if I'm not mistaken is the same so you have less ground to cover um, in this in the same period of time that you would in normal Rocket League so if you can do any type of aerial mechanics or anything get the ball in the air you have the same amount of time, but less ground to cover to get that goal scored. Okay, we're waiting. That's good. Got to win the challenge here so our teammate can do something. Nice. And we're waiting. That was a good fake challenge. Made him pop it. And we followed up. And right here, we're not necessarily trying to get a shot on net there. Just putting the pressure on to get the boost deal. And we end up scoring in the aftermath. This is something, I, again, we're going to do a couple more rewinds just to talk about important things. So see this? Again, we're up by we're up by two goals here with less than a minute. We don't necessarily have to score here. We have a boost in the corner that this guy to our right really wants to get. So we go ahead and steal that boost. Just do a little pop above the net. And then go around, take the other corner boost. They're both... Let's see what their boost totals are at here. So this guy makes a long rotation back. Okay, so he's at 100. Clear it out. What's the other guy at? Okay, so he whiffs the ball, wastes all his boost. We steal that one. Forces him to make a really bad clear. And our teammate just follows it up. The other guy misses. It's all about putting the pressure on, making him, and just making him panic. So let's go back to our POV. Low boost redirect, not bad. We could go up for that, but again, we don't have to. We're up by three. The game is basically over, so in spots like this, it's probably best to just keep the ball close. Don't overcommit. Don't go any. Don't go for anything too flashy. So all that's going to do is you're all you're going to be doing is taking unnecessary risks uh, that could potentially get you scored on and throw the game. I don't know what I'm doing there with those wave dashes, but yep. And we just throw the ball back. It's not the greatest, but we're just right now. We're just wasting time. As long as we keep the ball in the air, keep lobbing it around. We're going to win. And we end up taking it by three goals. And there, notice this whole game. I didn't display any astronomical mechanical plays. It was just a lot of quick little touches. Quick decisions, 
smart decisions based on what my teammates doing what, what my um and what my opponents are doing and again this is something you guys can do in your games it's not very difficult it just takes a little practice a little bit of thoughtfulness and you'll start seeing success pretty quickly using some of these little tips so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you got some type of value from it and i hope you have a great day have a good one